appropriate too. By the way, we've got Opie Wrights as our host. He's going to have to sit there and listen to us critique his play in the first match. And Opie Wrights, of course, started the Winter Cup a few years ago, but he's never quite finished it. Lost in the semifinals in 2019, then again in 2020. And here he is in the same spot in 2021, trying to finally climb over that particular snowdrift. I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you think he's going to do it, Sped? Uh, it's such a tough call. I mean, Opie's track record, um, no pun intended for you, of course, is mm -hmm. uh, obviously really good. But yeah, as you say, just never really had that finishing kick. Um, if he gets past Grulus, which of course is no mean feat in and of itself, uh, having to face Yerand or T-Flame, as we'll find out today, is also no mean feat. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, but look at Screw, right? You look at Screw's path this this uh, this season. You know, some some middling opponents certainly did pretty well in the group stages, but that seven zero on Yeesh in the round of sixteen really stands out. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's just a monster showing right there. I mean, just beating Yeesh in general is a, something for anybody to write home about. And then obviously the seven zero just really puts the exclamation point or several exclamation points on that. Yeah, several minimum. I'm going to say maybe an bang too, because you can't believe it happened. Um, let's get into the draft <laughs> here, though. Let's get into the draft for Opie Wrights and Screw Loose. Um, I have an inkling of how this might go, but, you know, we'll take a look at it anyway. Yeah, um, shocking. Yeah, shocking. Uh, here we go. Screw Loose chooses House Party. Opie Wrights chooses the ABCs. Doubling Redwoods and Ballroom, respe respectively, High Rise and Aquarium Band. Uh, this is all totally on brand for Opie and... Uh, well, pretty much for Screwloose too, except for that Redwoods double. I think that's the only thing that you could call, any, you know, anything even remotely like a surprise here. What do you, what do you make of that with the Redwoods double, if anything? Uh, well, first, it's worth mentioning that the uh, semifinals have a new format for the draft. Um, in that, as you see, a venue is doubled. Prior to this, it was just single picks all the way around. But now uh, we're going first to nine instead of first to seven. So that's worth mentioning as well as far as uh, planning out this set. Uh, with that said... Screwless going for the double Redwoods is a little bit surprising. I don't remember Screwless really being sort of a Redwoods aficionado at any point during SCL or prior to this. So perhaps uh, Screw maybe has been working it up or has just been sort of le leaning on maybe the swingier nature of it um, to hopefully pick up some wins against some of the OP who, of course, you know, is always fresh, always in form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he only picked it once in SCL6, screw loose with Redwoods, but uh, it is, as you say, a swingy venue, and it's something that I think you could uh, realistically practice between tournaments and then maybe kind of spring on people at inopportune moments, and uh, this would be the moment to do it here in the semifinals. We're going to start off with screw loose as the spy playing Seek on Modern. Uh, are you gentlemen ready? Shall I count us in? I'm ready whenever you are. All right. Starting in three, two, one, playing it. And Modern, again, 4 of 8. It started as 5 of 8 competitively, but switched uh, pretty early on. Uh, Screwless, by the way, takes control in empty conversation, leaves a little before the idol so that they can get a seduction done here at the windows. Do we get it in time? We absolutely do, and it's a green. Our seduction target, Buns, stays there quite a long time and sips a drink afterwards, and the flirt is half done immediately. I think breaking that idol at the start in the time of chaos, a good decision to get that flirt in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Opie Wrights himself is a big proponent of getting that early flirt sort of cheesy play in, and getting the green test helps a lot. We're in the conversation next to Double Agent, and we're going to fire off a banana bread. It's a really good one, too, actually, here for Modern. Yeah, not bad at all. I mean, I'm looking at five lowlights here, but I think some of them might have been a little subcertain. I'm not sure. But either way, you'll take that on Modern, especially with all this early progress. The fact you only have to get to four makes rushes much more viable. You can't really rush on a five mission variant venue, but you can definitely do it on a four. And with the flirt already half done and the contact done too, you will absolutely take that. Let's see if we try to finish this up quickly. It looks like we're not really headed for the seduction target because there's no space next to her. So it looks we're going to go right into statues, and you can already see this game coming together here. We're looking at probably inspects. Obviously, we're going to finish that seduce. But the question, as always, is what is the fourth mission going to be? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Um, you know, we have no fingerprint progress yet. The soft tail game is always a good choice if you can pull it off. But the ambassador is just kind of hanging on the conversation circle, not dropping the briefcase, not touching stuff. So that's not really an option for us yet. But with 2 minutes and 45 seconds remaining, there's still plenty of time for Screw to pick up either some fingerprint progress or some other mission progress here. And unsurprisingly, Opie is guarding that side angle on the bug very, very effectively. And Screwless, of course, knows that. It's no secret that Opie's going to prioritize bug as both spy and sniper. And the real question is, can you find one anyway? And if you can't, how can you abuse that attention? What do you do instead when the ambassador is vulnerable? There's another green flirt. That's three action tests, not counting the inspects. And they have all been green so far. That's two and a half missions done with about two and a half minutes left. That is ridiculous pacing from Screw. And I think a really good purloin here might be very hard to force a shot. Yeah, 
at worst, Drew could maybe force a 50-50 here. The problem is going to be that, especially with statues done, which we're finishing right now, if we do force that 50-50, I think we're going to be the only person at this party with that purloin with missions done, which yeah. might force a shot in and of itself. Could we inspect swap right here? It's so early in the game, you might... You might get a shot held. Yep, you might get a shot held for 10 seconds, but that's going to be a white test, and I think this probably is going to be a shot, though. He's just too certain of it. Yep, that's it. I think if you could do that swap after any other statue visitor this early in the game, the 50-50 would probably cause enough hesitation to maybe work out. But in this case, there's basically no one else other than, I think, Duke going to statues at all that game. Yeah, I really like the thought. As you said, it's so difficult to shoot there so early on, especially for a mission counter or somebody who likes to be sure of themselves like Opie. Um, especially with the two flirt as well, but credit to Opie, Opie just all over that swap, knowing that it could only have been a white test and taking the correct shot there. I think if it's a green and someone comes along to get it, if he's not totally all over that animation, and maybe even if he is, that alone is enough to force just a little hesitation. You want to wait for that one more action if you can, because it's very hard to think someone has done that early. But he was. The shot came off anyway, and it's one nothing. Opie now playing as Spy, as Ponytail, again on Modern in 3, 2, 1, playing it. Yeah, it's a really strong game from Screw to start off, and obviously a really strong shot from Opie. And I just, I just think... I think if you get a little more party activity, maybe that causes the hesitation. You can't do an effective rush early in a game unless you get some party activity to cover for you, I think. Otherwise, you're the only one doing anything. Speaking of doing things, Opie writes, blocked by one of the cast members in an otherwise empty conversation at the perfect angle. Screwloose did not quite guard against that microfilm. It is a white test, but we've gotten away with it, albeit at green shelves, which I'm going to say is generally the easiest to get away with on this particular venue. The question is, are we going to finish that microfilm, or was it just an oppor opportune thing at the beginning of the game that we can cash in later? Green test on the flirt right afterwards, too. Yeah, that microfilm, it was pretty visible, actually. Like, the head turn, Alice's ponytail, obviously very, very visible. The arm was visible. But Screwloose was doing some housekeeping. He was doing, taking uh, his lowlights on the double agents and just missed it entirely. And Opie really likes doing that early microfilm as well during the time of chaos. It's really strong, um, especially there at the green bookshelf, as you said, with somebody blocking in the conversation circle. And clearly we're seeing the strength of it right now. But getting the second one is going to be so much harder. It absolutely is, yeah. And there's a there, because of that, there's a pretty decent chance that that green microfilm is going to stay in that pocket even as we reach Mission Win Countdown. It would not surprise me. We've seen that from Opie before. Take an opportune half of a mission there and, well, consider it free, but if the game doesn't line up, don't do it. Speaking of, we've kind of just sitting here now. The flirt's still half done, still plenty of time on the clock, and yeah, eventually we've had enough of this, and yeah, knowing Opie, I was going to say, I brought it up because I was pretty sure he wasn't going to stay in that conversation much longer. He's going to go to the window now, and I'm not entirely sure why, probably just to break this up and see where the seduction target goes next. The seduction target is small, man, and is at statues. We're going to time ad, and said it's going to be a white time ad. Opie says, I don't want this trip to have been for nothing, but that is a bit of a risk, especially given that we had pretty good mission progress already. Yeah, unfortunately, the party hasn't really been cooperating. The double agent hasn't been landing in conversation circles. Our selection target's been around doing stuff. The double agent comes to us. Um, this isn't the worst situation, actually, for a banana bread, except that that big conversation circle does not have an SDA in it, unfortunately. But we can't know that. Uh, we are not taking the action, though. We're just holding and waiting. Yeah, we're holding and waiting, and the seduction target is in the far corner of the venue, too. Unflirtable uh, for the last minute or so, but here they come again. Let's see where they end up. One place you don't want them to go right now is green bookshelves, in my opinion. That's the only place, because you have no reason to be there. Instead, they join us. It's not right next to us, unfortunately, so the white test is only going to bring us up to 84% here, but that's enough. We are going to three flirt. The next flirt from any distance, if it's close enough to take, will be close enough to finish the mission as well, so at least there's that. Also, the double agent, here we go. Contact white test bunch of low lights come off screw does not even hesitate to low light this conversation that would have a fake too so this party is very narrowed down now with six low lights and only a handful of people who could have real and screw after a few seconds realizes exactly that and highlights everybody but smallman yeah it feels like we're in serious trouble now with that highlight with the only in the only real conversation circle we still have to get that one more microfilm or do a bunch more missions with only the contact and three quarters of the flirt done it feels like we're in serious trouble if we try and mission complete here I think you're right. I think the contact flipped this game almost entirely. There's the flirt done after the cooldown, and we leave immediately afterwards. We wrap around the ambassador without actually bugging them, and it's a good thing, too, because Screwless was staring at it. Therefore, we might actually lose a little suspicion. It looks like we would love to get this microfilm done while being blocked by this cast member. The same one who helped block us at the green shelf, but she's having none of it this time, says, I'm only running interference for you once. She gets out of there, and Screwless is rotating during the green animation transfer, and I think that might be clean. This would be a third mission. It's going in right now. 
Yeah, the timing was just so perfect. Screw rotated to be blocked by that conversation just as Opie triggered it off, and it was completely blocked. I think it was completely unseen, and Opie's going to statues now. Um, this has a fingerprint on it, I believe. Yeah, there it is. So Opie has multiple avenues to finish now, but we still have that looming highlight on us. Yeah, but if we got away with that microfilm, that was the tough part. Are we really going to get shot now for a fingerprint or an inspect? Because we need either one of those, and we have one minute to do it. And the ambassador is holding a book. I don't know where it's from, I have to confess, but it's going to go back in there at some point, and that might be our chance. We might end up at all three bookshelves, and if the microfilm is not already suspected based on going to those shelves to begin with, it might be afterwards, even if the animations themselves are not seen. We are bouncing from window to window, waiting waiting for something to open up to us. The ambassador is not having their personal space violated and is not moving at all. The seduction target Smallman might help with this. I'm not sure if they're close enough. We're right next to the seduction target. We might try to bug on the way out. There goes the briefcase. I think we're going to take it. The book is going back into... Uh, nope, nowhere. Nowhere at all. The book will not have a print on it, but the briefcase will. We're going to finish right here. Here's the print. We're in Mission 1 Countdown. No, no indication from Screw. Shoot someone for finishing inspects instead. One of the five or six people highlight for that real contact. So we were right. <laughs> the real banana bread with the highlights on the people in the real did pay dividends in the end, but for Opie rights instead of screw loose. Yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. Obviously, it's very risky to try to mission win complete when you are part of that narrowed down glowing group. But the one saving grace is that everyone in that group is much more suspicious. And if even one of them does something like finishes inspects or paths by the ambassador or God forbid both. They might take a bullet instead of the spy, and that's exactly what happens here. I think getting away with that microfilm, though, had already won it for OB because you could see, even if they didn't shoot sorry, that print was not necessarily tracked. At least the first one wasn't, and no finishing of inspects means no easy shot. And it turns out, based on sorry's shot, I think finishing inspects wouldn't have worked. Instead, it's going to be a 2 nothing OP lead heading into his favorite venue, Ballroom. Uh, Screwloose is going to be spying first as one of the twins in 3, 2, 1, playing it. I believe that's Bling. Yep, looks like it. Screw this leaving AI control on for a bit, uh, landing at windows here. Presumably we're going to sip and then move on. Selection target is at bookshelf, unfortunately, which is already a full pad. So we're going to have to find something else to do to kill some time here. Yeah, we've seen that a lot. We saw that from Opie before. Opie clearly was just ahead of the party a lot, which I don't this is, that sounds like a compliment but, compliment, but what I actually mean is waiting around for something to open up. Spent so much time at windows or in empty conversations. Screw loose, getting a lot of action here early uh, after that window that we just talked about. Fingerprint on the briefcase instead, and the ambassador's going to pick up a side statue as well. And I can definitely see behind that conversation in particular with the ambassador moving around that there's a chance you could get away with this sort of thing, but probably not a white purloin in the back. We run away after taking the guest list. Here comes the zoom. That list is seen. Toby is low lit. The sniper knows, and this has got to be narrowed down. There was a lot of confusion, though. We did it putting down at the briefcase behind that conversation circle. There's a lot of occlusion, and there's a possibility Opie didn't get a clear look at it. And given the reaction here, some lowlights coming off, some highlights coming off, but we're not one of them yet. Yeah. So it's possible Opie is not fully aware of what happened there. You're right, the laser movement is a little tentative here. It feels a little uncertain, and that was a weird move there behind that full conversation putting down the briefcase. Yeah, I think it might have just happened just at the right time to catch Opie a little off guard, but the question is, can they recover if that's the case? You can see a few highlights walking around, and we're just standing there. We're going to try to bug as the ambassador goes was, in on us. It was clearly visible, but Opie didn't see it. I'm not sure if he did or not. I think you're just not expecting that. This is the second hard tell after you've shown one, shown one to the sniper. It's not like bug and then swap where they don't know you've done the first one. He knows a hard tell's already come off and he's probably not thinking bug, but he also knows he can probably wait for at least a contact. We haven't, we're not out of the woods yet. We haven't actually even entered the woods. I think that comes next. Look at this. We have a fingerprint. We have a purloin. We have a bug. We have the weakest flirt possible, 17%. Fingerprint is done now on that drink. We can finish with a contact, but I don't know if we want to. 90 seconds. I don't know if we can finish flirt either. We are in such a weird position right now. Yeah, this is the weirdest spot. I mean, flirt with a minute 20 left to go. We're going to need at least, realistically, two more good close flirts. And with no time left, Screw is making no indications of meaning to do this. I think Screw probably thinks he's a much bigger suspect than he is, but I don't know what his plan is. I mean, it's a reasonable inference, but look at this. Our seducting target is across from us. That's why it's 17% to begin with, and they're not leaving. We have to leave and come back, and even then, it might be close. Instead, we white test again, get to 34%. We've two flirted to get one flirt, essentially, and we have 50 seconds left. This would be a heartbreaker of a loss if we can't finish. I think we're probably going to be resigned to contact, and I don't know if we're going to get away with it. Instead, we're going to leave and give ourselves an opportunity, but we're going to be bouncing around, and we'd have to be shot for aggressive flirting late in the game. 
which is a tough shot probably for Opie to take, but when you know you're behind like this, it's the kind of shot you might. We haven't been next to our seduction target until just now. There's another white test. Three white flirts. That's brutal. If any of those were green, we'd be in a better position right now. 30 seconds left. We're going to have to leave and go back immediately. Probably on the other side of our seduction target is a little fig leaf to cover this naked seduction. But I don't know if we're going to get away with it. We are all over the place. Seduction target's taking a drink. Will they leave right after? They do not. Their feet have been glued to the floor for two minutes straight, it seems. 10 seconds left. It's going to be overtime. We've joined them. We're going to contact instead. I don't know if that's deliberate or not because a close white would do it. I think the cooldown hadn't happened maybe there goes the contact one second left it's overtime and it's the wrong person shot it's gonna be teal going down screw with a huge unconventional spy win when they needed it most wow what a flurry of activity at the end i mean it looked like our motions back and forth into that conversation were so so obvious but i think the banana bear was the right call i mean who would do that when you only needed one more flirt right and i think that probably confused opie just enough to maybe take the wrong shot, draw the wrong inferences, and take the shot on to Teal. Jeez. Yeah, I just clearly we were not a huge suspect for this, and I think avoiding statues probably had a lot to do with it, certainly. And yeah, I think it probably was X priorities. I wondered if it was actually a cooldown timer issue, but no, I checked the timeline, and the cooldown timer had gone off. So we could have flirted, but I think we expected it to be the first option, and instead it was contact. That is pretty rough. But it works, and it shows you that, yes, the bug must have been clean, and the purloin kind of worked. Time of chaos stuff from the spy. Aggression works again, and Screwloose now has a chance to snipe on Ballroom to tie this up after falling behind 2 nothing. What a potential turnaround. It's going to be Opie as general in 3, 2, 1, planet. Whew. All right, so, yeah. Catching my that breath. Was... You, you go ahead. You go ahead for a minute. <laughs> All right. So Opie starting off here, just going to hunt down this early flirt. Um, I don't care. Yep, and he's going to cheese it as is tradition. He's going to step in and finish this drink. So that early flirt progress, as Opie really, really likes to do, is so strong. And it's so hard to catch that, too, unless you're really looking for it in the time of chaos. Yeah, four games so far as Spy. One of them, the flirt came in very, very late to 17% from Screw in the previous game. And, hey, they didn't finish flirt after, their, uh, after that point. But in the other three early green flirt from the spy and at what point do you think they're going to think about actually looking at these logs looking at these replays after and saying you know what it might actually be worth checking for those early cheese flirts in some of these games good point yeah i mean opie unfortunately whites the second one so that slows down the rush put breaks on it right away um i had a feeling that if opie hit that second green and had that flirt done immediately we were going to see a bit more of a rush progress but instead opie slowing things down as a seduction target leaves us and just waiting for things to shake out the ambassador was maybe in a buggable position there, but despite General's strong bug, we're just hanging out and waiting for more opportunities instead of forcing the action here. You make an excellent point. It's actually a really big pivot point, that second flirt. It determines what might happen next. If it's a second green early on and flirt is already done, it opens up avenues for for a rush. If it's not, your entire game plan has to change. By the way, we purloined in the meantime. Greened and walked away, and it's just gone off. And there it is. It's definitely visible on screen now. I think the funny thing is, Opie's behaving as if it was a green flirt. Maybe we're going to rush anyway. But I think in this case, if you get away with the purloin on Ballroom pretty clean, without the party being too narrowed down, you're going to get a sip shot more often than not. You can see four lowlights have come off. One of them is Smallman, and another is Sorry, which is low-key underrated on Ballroom because her bug is absolutely treacherous on this venue. Here comes the contact as well. It's going to be a white test. We are behind the right. pillar, and we're in a relatively sparse conversation. That's going to knock out at least one more. Let's see, maybe two. This party is pretty narrowed down, but the hard tell is done. The thing is, though, knowing Opie, I'm not sure he's going to want to go to statues to finish. No, I agree. And it's hard to tell how much of a suspect we are, because Screwloose has taken lowlights, but has not taken highlights. There comes another lowlight coming off as Screwloose is sort of thinking things out. We finish our flirts as well. So now comes, the, as always, the ever-present question, right? What's going to be the fourth mission? The ambassador's kind of in a buggable position here at the statue right now. And Opie is the type of player who would take advantage of this a lot of the time. But we're not so far. Opie seems to be eyeing down the ambassador, though. I wonder if we're planning to go chase down that fingerprint instead. I mean, he's pretty much always eyeing the, eyeing the ambassador. I think he has dreams about the ambassador. The ambassador is his center of gravity at almost all times. In it. But it looks like this case, because the ambassador is possibly in the least buggable position, but we're small going man, to the statue instead. Small but Smallman's going to block us. Smallman's going to block the statue. Oh, my goodness. Bane of snipers and spies alike. And we're not going to be able to finish in one go here. With 40 seconds left, we're going to have to go back. And there is a fingerprint on this as well. That might change things just a little bit because the blue book should have a fingerprint on it. But no, no, we're just, we are going to hang around and finish anyway. The inspects are done and Screwloose is not reacting. And Opie's going to take another spy win again. <laughs> Opie's going progress. for the PM bug at the end as well. It doesn't take, but oh. I like the thought. 
This is what, as if to say, this is what I would have done if he wasn't at that blue shelf right around the time I wanted to finish. That's a three cycle for the win at the end. Says, I don't care about Smallman. I don't think I'm being watched closely enough. That is a hard tell in and of itself. It's a hard tell doing a soft tell, but if it's not caught, it doesn't matter. Opie writes again, the spy winning the day so far, three to one now. Screw loose as the aforementioned Orange Sorry, though, in the next game on Ballroom in three, two, one playing it so as you said sorry's bug is really one of the strongest and on a smaller venue like ballroom her weakness of course with the slow speed isn't really as oh we're going for that walking bug but it's very very visible super visible we got the flirt and we tried to turn it into a bug we tried to turn the opportune flirting into an opportune bug and instead it's just a shot and just like that we go from almost tied, screw loose, sniping for the tie on ballroom to down four to one with one more ballroom game to go. And Opie really rolling on the spy. Screw loose has not shown much ability to stop them yet. Let's see if they can now. They have no choice. It's going to be buns on ballroom in three, two, one, playing it. Three, a three game deficit is not insurmountable. Um, We've seen definitely seen comebacks like this happen, uh, both in Winter Cup and in other sets as well. So screw loose, as long as he can keep it together, maybe pick up this game here and put himself in good shape to start with. We'll be in really good shape. We're going to st- center statues here along with everybody else and picking up the early highlight for it. Yeah, but it doesn't look too bad because we sip while flirting the ventriloquist flirt, I like to call it. You can do it without moving your lips, but it still works, even on the queen who... Don't think dates very much, but hopefully it'll go better this time. Two inspects on the meantime. No, we're going to get all three. Hope he's saying until you catch me. I'm just going to hang here. The sip actually probably helped us a little bit, but inspect is done early. And Opie writes, normally askew statues, uh, especially on ballroom, is going to have his inspects done in both of these spy games. And you're right. The deficit not as bad as it looks. We often get misleading deficits when someone has not sniped yet at high levels. And that's the case here. Four ones are so very, very often actually four twos in waiting. And uh, Skrulu said, better hope that's the case here. Seduce is Half done too, by the way. It was another green test, but this one is canceled. Uh, I mentioned she doesn't date much, and it shows right there. Leaves in the middle of the flirt, and Opie writes, who could have had two missions done with a lot of time left on the clock, is going to have to rethink any possible rush as a result because the queen is not cooperating. Uh, Opie just showing casual disrespect for Screw here with two three cycles so far in this set on back to back spy games. We're going to the statues again now, and it's going to be a swap. We're just white swapping and putting it down immediately. Opie trying to cheese this swap out. Yep, and it is seen. Totally seen. The hair stuck out behind the conversation, and you could tell that was the move. The move was, this is a full conversation. I think I won't actually be seen here, except, you know, that hairdo really puts a damper on it. We're not as tall as Seek, but we are taller than we would be with flatter hair, let's say. That is very aggressive, and Screw will be very happy to finally get a win back. But that's what happens sometimes when an aggressive spy is playing with a margin, too. Now we're going to be headed into Redwoods, though, where margins can evaporate very, very quickly. Screwloose is going to be spying first. I'm going to keep talking for just a second or two because Redwoods, as uh, most hosts know, takes a long time to load. It's all those awful, (laughs) awful trees, I assume. It is going to be Screwloose uh, playing as Kane, though, known for that good bug. But, you know, I hope he knows that in three, two, one, playing it. We know from watching Opie and other competitive matches on Redwood that about 90% of his time as sniper on Redwoods is spent staring at that ambassador. Yeah, and I think Opie's actually very comfortable on Redwoods. Um, I think he's been pretty vocal in the past about being pretty comfortable on it, even quicker than a lot of people kind of acclimated to it. So I don't think this is really a, a big disadvantage for Opie in the way that maybe Screwloose is hoping it would be. But we'll have to see. Again, Screwloose must have a plan for doubling it. So I'm curious to see if he has any tech or anything to pull out here. Well, sometimes Redwoods is the tech. The tech is built into the venue. By the way, another early, early flirt, 34%. We're going to leave shortly afterwards, and so will the seduction target. So it's a good thing. We're going to go to one of these single statues, and it's always very interesting to see whether or not someone goes to one of these because it means they have to go to one of two spots on the venue one of those two front-facing bookshelves, or else they won't finish inspects in two visits. So it definitely limits your options to go to that single statue early in the game. Yeah, we're going to go pick up a drink as well. There hasn't been all that much bar progress so far. So a purloin here is maybe a little bit questionable, uh, but hopefully Screw will have more visitors to the bar along with him to add some confusion and let him fire this off. But in the meantime, we're just going to go finish up Flirt instead while we wait. 
Yeah, we're probably going to get around two-thirds of the way there with at least a white test. And I think one of the difficulties here is that this purloin seems to have been noticed specifically because the ambassador was in a relatively safe, I do say relatively, not they're never safe on Redwoods, at that back blue shelf with someone else already reading a book next to them. So Opie had a little few extra little computing cycles uh, that were freed up by the ambassador being relatively safe that could be dedicated to the bar instead. And that seems to have been what happened here. I think we are known as a drink taker. And the ambassador's still here, not too vulnerable this is making Opie's job a lot easier. The movement of the ambassador for someone like Opie who prioritizes this mission oh, no. can be the difference between a, a much easier game and a much harder one. What has happened here? We have gulped. We missed back. the pad to start with. Then we kind of twitched and went back into the pad correctly to pick up a new drink. I think we just wanted... Nope. We just reject. I'm not sure what the plan here was. I'm not sure either, but I don't think the missed pad was noticed. I was looking from sniper cam and it was not particularly noticeable. Screw loose is going all over the place. We're going back and we're shaking our camera angrily on the spy side i'm not sure this was intended is there a print on this it's the only thing i could think of that would make any sense yeah maybe we just action priority the reject instead of the delegate last time i'm not really sure honestly what's going on here but we're gonna go finish up our flirt in the meantime and also time is ticking down we're down to a minute but we have the double agent here so we can fire off three missions right now but the double agent leaves Oh, goodness. We can finish the Seduce, and we have at least. That's one mission down. Inspect, again, looms large because we can only finish in a couple different places. Seduction target leaves, but we don't care anymore. We are going to delegate right after, though. I like that. Delegate, make someone leave after the first person leaves, and we are alone with one person here. It's going to be Twin, I believe, who's going to take this for us. Big moment of truth coming up, but it won't get us to four missions, though. Yeah, and with so little time left, we're going to finish up Inspects right here. But even with this, we're going to have to find that banana bread. And the double agent is right now out of conversation. Perlo so without the double agent cooperating, there's there the purloin. Yep. We're getting the Inspects done, but we still need that one more mission. And again, we're really depending. We could always do the last minute microfilm slam. But again, time ticking down. And it's going to be overtime, too. We're going to have to time it. It's going to be during the beep beeps. It's going to be during the last 10 seconds. It's going to be a white time, and we're going to be reading the book at Windows. And you got to imagine this is very narrowed down. The Perlin is taken, though, and we're still watching the Ambassador. I think we might have gotten away with this, but can we finish? Do we want to risk contacting the double agent? They're still not in a conversation. Is that just going to be a bug? It's going to be a wrong arm bug. And Opie's been watching this all game, and I see Safety off on us. Safety off no! on us. No, he hesitates. He decides it's not a bug, but it is a win. Look at this. Screw loose. Very unconventional, again, with the purloin bug combo. Gets by Opie again somehow a second time. That was such a sick bug. Like, that wrong arm with the, going across the back of the conversation circle, so, so hard to see. And I think Opie didn't see it at all. I think he was maybe just credited. And credit to Opie, then, for crediting that bug uh, without being able to see it. And thinking about taking that shot, but it just didn't quite come off. Yeah, no reaction to Purloin that I can see. Wrong arm bug while holding a book late in the game, and I'm not sure if we even were suspected for that time ad. Whatever it is, it's a weird, weird game from Screwloose, but it works again. He's not called that for nothing, folks. It's going to be Opie Rights now on Redwoods, and actually in real danger of losing a big, big lead playing as Red Dress in 3, 2, 1, playing it. What a turnaround, potentially. Screwloose again, again, sniping for the tie. But he gave it away last time on Ballroom, and it's a lot easier to give that away, that particular advantage, on Redwoods. So off the top of your head, do you happen to know what the sniper spy win breakdown is on Redwoods now? I don't, actually. No, I know it's been shifting, though, as, sniper, as uh, snipers get more comfortable, which is what usually happens. Yeah, I was meaning to ask. I mean, we pick up the first green flirt, by the way. Both these players are green, green test monsters. Um, the ambassador's coming to us, and... Knowing OP rights, not quite in standing bug range, unfortunately. In Season 6, Redwoods spies 52% of the time. By the way, you can check this out with a little shortcut. Spypartyfans.com slash trees will take you directly to the Redwoods page if you want it. Possibly also some curse words, but I won't tell you what they are. <laughs> OP rights, by the way, another aggressive flirt, as you alluded to. A green test, 51%. We go to Windows. That's where OP rights decides what to do next. Looks out at the trees and decides what to do next and sees where people land. And oh my god, we're right next to the Russian target again. And it's another green test. And Seduce is done. And look out, rush potential. We tweak into the conversation to try to bug. And this is very much on screen. We are shot in our curly, curly hair. Screw loose all over it and has brought it back. Redwoods, great choice, it looks like. Yeah, Opie Rights went for a perspective bug earlier on the first time I had a conversation circle and just airballed it completely. Um, I'm not sure if it was on screen or not. I wasn't looking at the sniper side, but I think Screw was really all over us from the very beginning there, even before that twitch was visible. Wow. 
Oh boy. I should mention, by the way, the 52% spy win rate. More of those are civilian shots than mission wins, but this time it was spy shot indeed, which happens about 44% of the time, at least in the previous SEL season. Screwloose, not out of the Redwoods yet, has actually won the first two and it's brought them back into this game, but, but that could flip. It is a fickle, fickle venue playing now as Buns in three, two, one, playing it. Screwloose has been leaving AI control on a little bit. Um, unfortunately, Slush Target is at the center bookshelf there, so the Cheese Flirt is not available to us for the first time. I think we've seen it in a little bit. So we're just going to hang out, talk in this meaningless conversation circle, and wait for either the Double Agent or the Seduction Target or somebody else to settle down in a position that we can do stuff. Yeah, what I really want to see is how OP responds, how Screwloose responds. As we mentioned before, Screwloose had a chance to tie and didn't. Uh, lost a very winnable game on a Ballroom, and but did tie it this time with a less winnable game on Redwoods, but now we're tied. We have a chance for our first lead of the match, and that would be a really, really big deal after falling behind 4-1. We might be able to get to take this briefcase. It's awfully close, but no, we'd rather uh, we'd rather do a little uh, May-December action here. It's going to be a flirt with the general at the bar, and it's another green test, 51%, making up for lost time in more ways than one. <laughs> You're not joking. And this party's had so much activity so far. There have been a number of bar visitors. There have been a number of statue visitors thus far. And Opie's going to have his hands full keeping track of everything going on at this party. Another bar visitor comes to join us. We're going to sip. It seems like this is a really good opportunity to fire off a delegate or to perhaps go to statues. Just with all the other visitors thus far at this point, we would just be kind of lost in the noise of the crowd. By the way, I the best thing I appreciate most about casting is that you are contractually obligated to laugh at my bad jokes. That's another seduction right there. 51% on the first one, and now we finish up on the second. It's green test after green test on these flirts, and we delegate right afterwards to the queen. It's the queen again. This time, she has no choice but to be helpful because we forced her to go take that list for us. Here comes a contact in the meantime. It's going to be a white test, and I kind of like this with all the chaos. It's probably going to come off right around the same time the purloin does. Contact comes first. Next drink taker chosen by Toby, and there's a bit more of a delay here than down. Like. Opie is staring down that list, but it's blocked oh. by Seek. But Toby's action is visible, and Obi immediately starts taking low lights. Yeah, this time, this time, ready for the purloin after missing it so completely in the previous game, and that's going to be narrowed down. However, narrowed down with 90 seconds left and only one mission left to go. The ambassador walks right by us, and Screwloose resists the bug attempt. Probably wise, especially because we might get a sip shot. As I mentioned, it's the more likely way for a sniper to win Redwoods compared to mission win. Ambassador walks by us again. We do try to bug this time. And it does not take because the Ambassador goes the other way. The Ambassador very buggable twice in a row. No attempt the first time. Yes, attempt the second, but we miss. And we now have a minute left, the last 30 seconds, taunted by the Ambassador without finishing. If the Ambassador had thrown us a bone there and gone the right direction, that would have been a completely clean bug. It was and completely invisible. Yeah, that would have yeah, been the end of the game, game right there. And look at this. Inspects on the front statue. I guess we're going to go try to finish it. Books right here. Underrated part of this, by the way, the last game was you can't inspect swap at those because they're books. You can't swap a book, unfortunately. And uh, that came up in the previous game when Screw was just trying to finish and had to resort to a white timeout at the end. Even though it worked, wasn't ideal. Screw this time, maybe waiting for something a little better. No, nope, I think we're just going to go to the green books here and try to finish. It's going to be late inspects. Statue to statue, and I don't know if Opie... Oh, there's a highlight, but he knows he's got at least 10 to 12 seconds from that highlight to make up his mind here about whether or not to shoot. Is it narrowed down from the purloin? It yep. is. Opie, presence of mind is what I always say when people don't insta-shoot that last statue approach. You know you have some time, and if you're not sure, and how could you be in this particular game, might as well give yourself a few more seconds just in case. He does, but it is the right shot. That was very, very close. Opie maintains the lead. Really good job by Obi coming back from that purloin. It really didn't look like he was completely on top of that, given that there was only one Lilith that came off after the purloin came off. But Obi really recovering, shooting the center statue visitor at the very end of the game, as players often do. And it's correct a fair percentage of the time. Yeah, it often is. I think if we get that inspect earlier in the game, maybe it makes a bit of a difference. But, oh boy, when it's narrowed down a little from the purloin, it might have been missed the first time. But the second time, we at least got that party whittled down so that we're noticing when someone is finishing inspects late and Screwloose, a very good spy game, results in a big zero. Opie, however, now spying on Redwoods, which is just about as hard as sniping in some ways, playing as queen in 3, 2, 1, playing it. And Screw again, again, sniping for the tie for the third time this match. As you said, Redwoods is deceptively difficult for a spy. The time is unforgiving. Wow, wrong arm bug right off the bat. Opie doing Opie things. I think it was clean. 
I think it was probably clean too, and the aggression in these early games has barely hurt anyone. There's the orange sorry bug attempt early on Ballroom. I think that's the only example of an early spy aggression causing them to clearly lose as a result. Opie, by the way, is going to go to Windows and join with, well, look at this. This is a little more age appropriate. Two uh, elderly women, 51%. And she walks away right afterwards. She is very slow, by the way, and that is something you have to keep in mind when you decide to chase. This feels like a candidate for a rush, but Opie's slowing things down. It felt like with that early green flare and the early bug, this would be sort of a, a trademark Opie rush game. But we're not doing that, especially as the seduction target goes to books instead. We could go for a flirt and a, and a swap immediately and then finish with a banana bread, but Opie doesn't look like he's inclined to do that. No, I don't think so. And, you know, if you really feel you got away with the bug, that's going to inform your decision here, I think. Uh, if you feel like it's clean. Obi probably does feel like it's clean. It certainly feels clean to us, but we are high lit because the ambassador has cozied up next to us afterwards anyway, so we're probably suspected for the bug that took earlier, and look, look at Opie's camera shake afterwards. I'm pretty sure they felt that highlight. Yeah, Opie credited with the bug. Really, really unfortunate. I mean, Screw didn't see anything. I'm not sure that we have any real suspicion aside from just being in the proximity in a buggable position. But even so, that's got to hurt so, so much. And if Obi is aware of it, as you say, that's going to inform the rest of this game as well. That's right. Might have wanted to play it safe, feeling like the bug was clean, but might think different of it now, now that we might be suspected for a bug that was already done. We are going to go into the bar in the meantime, maybe just to kind of wait and see and give ourselves an option. You could take the delegate here and give your seduction target a chance to land somewhere so you know where they are, and that's exactly what's happened here, but I don't know if we can squeeze in between our seduction target and uh, leopard print there. There is a fingerprint on this drink, however. We're going to sip it casually while taking it, and the seduction target leaves as we head over. Opie redirects immediately and decides to go to the fireplace so we can see where our seduction target lands. This has been a familiar story for Opie, waiting at windows to see what the party does. Yeah, unfortunately, that's been kind of the theme of this set in general for both players. There's been a lot of action with the seduction target just either bailing at the last minute or just kind of wandering around doing stuff that doesn't really help us out. And here you see it again, the seduction target goes to statues. So we're just going to delegate and cheese this out immediately. Oh, and we're whipping our camera around. Total camera whiplash. We're rushing, but our seduction target is dragging at statues again. We have delegated in the meantime to green dress, though. And that's going to be a big moment because we absolutely need that to go off. And it does with about 50 seconds left. Purloin's done. Bug is done. It's that combination again. One fingerprint in the pocket and half the flirt, too. But the seduction target has not cooperated. And we kind of need a green here. We're right next to this. Right next to him, right next to him, and we do it another green. It's another two flirt, and we really needed it this time. Three and a half missions done, and the ambassador comes up next to us. Oh, no, not again. At least it was on the drink side, I think, but the drink is gone. We could be suspected for the bug again. We could be a suspected for the bug again. We're going to go to the books here. Is there a print on this? There better be. I think it's the only way to finish. We're inspecting. It's a red down. Test. Oh no, we are not finishing inspects. You hope the sniper knows that, but maybe they don't. We are fingerprinting the book. We're fingerprinting it right at around 10 seconds. There will be no overtime. We're being stared at. We're being stared at. No shot yet. One second of overtime coming up. No. Opie wins. Oh my, what a turnaround at the end there. Wow, what a flurry. Screw saw the purloin. Look at how narrowed down this party is at the end. We are one of, looks like three suspects along with Irish, our drink taker. And we are finishing off that... Fingerprint. Screw must have just missed a print. That's the only explanation for it. Yeah, if we finish inspect, if that's a finished inspect, that's a shot. Almost definitely with how narrow down this is. But look at that red inspect, that action priorities issue at the end. It caused about a second of overtime, and otherwise there would have been none. And I think a couple seconds more would have done it. That was very, very close in the end, unfortunately. But it does work out. Opie writes, preserves the lead coming out of Redwoods. What a turnaround after the first turnaround. Back and forth they go. Six to four, Opie now heading into Courtyard. And this is a very sniper-friendly map at the higher venues, uh, higher levels, rather. So this is the kind of venue you want to be going into with a lead. And that is what Opie writes has. If he can hold serve, he's going to really put the pressure on Screw in these last few games after Courtyard. Screw loose, spying first as Ponytail in three, two, one, playing it. This is the position you wanted to be in. Opie writes, could have been in a much better position, up four to one, to be sure, but you will take it now that you're on the other side of Redwoods with a two-game uh, margin. As I said before, a reminder, this is a best of 16, so first to nine wins instead of first to seven. So we still have a number of other maps to play here, just no matter how this one goes. 
Yep, and that makes a big difference right now because otherwise we'd be on the cusp of victory and a berth into the Winter Cup Finals for the first time again. Opie Wright's semi-finalist each of the previous two years in their own tournament has never made the Winter Cup Finals. Has made the Summer Cup Finals a couple of times, uh, however. But nope, their own tournament, not rigged very well, I'm afraid. This might be their first time in the finals of their own cup. They are so, so close now. But as you said, not as close as they would have been earlier in the tournament. Still need a few more, but they're in position to get them. That's going to be a contact here, semi-early from Screw. No early flirt this time. The party did not allow for it, but that is a really good contact. Look at this. Yeah, only one low light available. Uh, some perhaps assume real highlights or low lights available if you want to take the three mm, over here with the ambassador ones, right though. now. But yeah. yeah. That's Only four good. people have a fake, which is very good for Courtyard. The two biggest conversations, including ours, had a real... We have cozied up next to the Ambassador here and basically taken a scrunched-up arm-in Ambassador bug path in without taking the bug. And Opie Wrights is absolutely looking at it. We do get our first flirt, 34%. I think we're going to be credited with that bug. I think we might get shot for just a soft tail finish here. Maybe. I think Screwless was hoping that Opie would be so on top of that that Opie would be aware that no bug and give us less suspicion for that really, really suspicious position. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's hard That's the to tell, only upside though. with someone who watches bug that closely, right? If they're good enough, if they're watching it closely enough, and you don't bug while taking a suspicious path, you can lose heat. That's the kind of paradoxical Yomi stuff that happens at the higher levels, but it's still a risk because that particular kind of bug where you bury your arm in the ambassador in their character model, you all you have is the path in that case, right? You can't be confident about the arm swing usually, so... That's a big deal, and so is this statue visit, because contact is already done, and we are at the statues now, and if that bug is credited, this is about the time you'd want to be thinking about shooting, and yep, safety off, yep. safety off, and I think the shot's going to come off in just a few seconds, we're going to credit that bug, and I think we're going to take a shot, and it might be 7-4 in a matter of moments here, but wow, look at this, no shot yet, confident of no flirt, I guess. Quick talk after, you got to shoot now if you suspect the bug, and they do, and they have, it is 7-4, the bug path credited with a bug we don't take. Opie in chat saying 90% on this being a gulp. And that's really good presence of mind. Um, <laughs> watching Sips. I mean, if, if you already have a suspect for the perspective bug, then that's one thing. But even so, just sort of tracking the Sips on your suspects as they go into statues, like that's next level stuff. Yeah, if that gulp happens before the bug path, it probably isn't noticed. But afterwards, while you're looking for any reason to think, when could they be finishing? When do I need to take the shot if this is something like a rush? It, from the sniper's perspective, that was a rush, even though the spy did not have the bug and was not about to finish. But it looks almost the same. And it's that particular type of bug, too. It's the kind of bug a good sniper has to infer from the path rather than catch the actual animation on. It's the one most likely to be credited because it's most likely to need to be credited. That's 7-4 OP now, and now spying. It's pretty much gravy on Courtyard. You've gotten the win you needed on the sniper side, but now you have a chance to really put your foot to the floor as buns on the spy roll in 3, 2, 1, playing it. If they win here, they can pretty much punch their ticket to their first Winter Cup Finals, but if they don't, they're going to have to play a little bit longer. Yeah, And of course, just a reminder, we are going to see who the winner of this set will be facing next time. We're going to go into early statues, by the way. Pick up this early flirt and pick up the early highlight as well for it. And that's unfortunate. I mean, it's kind of what you expect here on Courtyard especially. Um, but even so, you know, Obi hates being that early highlight, and that's why he avoids statues so much. Okay, we're just swapping. We're just swapping. It's a red test, not that it really matters. Red and white come to the same thing here, and I, I don't know if that's a mistake, or, yeah, we're just going crazy. We're going totally ham. It's Buns with an aggressive swap again, and Screw Loose catches it immediately <laughs> again. This okay. is what I say. Aggressive spy playing with margin. The second Opie gets himself a three-game lead, he just swaps and says, if I get away with this, I win. And if I don't, I was up anyway. I mean, we've learned as a collective, as the internet, what happens when you play with margin sometimes. So Opie maybe should be a little bit careful. <laughs> um, but even so, that lead is still pretty serious. It's pretty serious at this point, but... If Screw Loose manages to bring it back, that's going to feel pretty bad because we had a three-game lead twice, and both games we picked the exact same character and did pretty much the exact same thing. So there's a script here. I, uh, I like my statistical analysis as much as anyone, but this feels like a trend already. If you get up, if you're down three games on OP, look out for buns and look out for early swaps. It's going to be onto Veranda now, too, where things don't get any better from Screw Loose needing one of those spy wins, needs to sweep a venue at some point to pull this back, and Veranda's not the place you want to be doing it if you're on the spy, but... This was all chosen before we know how it was going to go down. It's 7-5 Opie now, heading into Veranda. Screw loose on the spy. Red dress, 3-2-1, playing it. Kind of surprised neither player has pulled out the emergency small man button thus yeah. far this set. <laughs> I mean, you'd think at this point this would be the time to do it. Although Veranda is really not like a huge small man venue, even so. 
I mean, if you got to do what you got to do. They're all huge Smallman venues. Smallman looms large metaphorically in all of them. Screw loose with an early flirt again. And God knows if they're doing early flirts on Courtyard and Ballroom and everywhere else, they're definitely going to do them on Veranda where you can get away with them. I do expect the snipers to be a little more patient, though, on those hard tells, though, on these five mission variants. That's the big difference here is that as a sniper, if you do your job, you can wait the spy out. You can miss a mission entirely and still pull it out in the end. And it's that's why it's going to be so, so hard for Screw loose to come back here. But he really is only... One spy went away because he gets to snipe on it right afterwards. So if he does pick up this spy win, things get very, very interesting. This is a huge one right here. And there's another aggressive flirt right afterwards, crashing through a conversation to get to our seduction target, which is Seek. And we don't ever need to see them again because it's done in two. The green tests on these flirts have totally changed the complexion of these spy games. Absolutely. The ambassador left us a fingerprint on that statue there as well, but we're not going to take it. We're going to go into the other set of statues and pick up our first set of inspects instead. And I like this. You can, it's really, really hard to finish missions on Veranda without doing inspects at some point. And I think there's really no problem doing it here at this point in the game. Yeah, and particularly with Opie, who usually gives highlights for finishing inspects, not for starting them. I think there's a lot less downside, and it gives you an option later. Maybe you can finish inspects and fingerprint at the same time, something like that. Or sometimes, if it's remembered, you get less suspicion for starting inspects and never finishing them. So I like the option, especially when normally the kind of soft tail progress you'd be making at this point in the game, Seduce, is already done. So we go to the next best thing, which is contact the double agent. We join with the double agent in this far conversation. It's a pretty decent time to do it. Not ideal, but decent enough, and it's a white test, and there's several people, it looks like six or seven, who could have a fake here, but only one hard low light. That is absolutely huge. Opie might want to make up for this by assuming real at some point, but I'm not sure if he's going to be comfortable doing that with so many people potentially having a fake. Screw has found such good banana bread so far in this set. Uh, we saw in Courtyard the really, really good one. We saw right there. I mean, part of that is just a function of luck, but Screw really picking his spots really, really well. The only thing that's concerning me is with two minutes left, we have really good partial mission progress, but we still have those all-important hardtails left to finish. You're absolutely right. Screw just hanging out. The two softtail missions, the ones you would normally do to make progress and give yourself options later, they're both done, and Inspect's halfway there, and we're not sure if we want to finish it. So we actually don't have that much to do except a hardtail, and that's exactly what we do. It's a white purloin in the back of the venue while the ambassador's on the other side. That is what you want to do it. It was visible. He's noticed it was visible. We don't know who took it, but we do have proximity highlights coming out for some people in that conversation. Three of them, as a matter of fact, but we're one of them. We might need a little help from one of these civilians now so that they get shot instead of us, because I don't know if we can finish, especially via Inspect's. Yeah, that just flipped the complexity of this game so, so much. A green test there puts us in such a good place. The white test, especially being noticed immediately, we're in such big trouble now, especially with those two inspects already. We have to have just shot to the very, very top of the suspect list. Yeah, we absolutely have, but so has Sari. Remember, Sari shot as a sieve earlier for a similar thing. Highlight on Modern by Screwloose. But we flipped roles here, and the situation is quite different. This is not Modern. This is Veranda, which means you can wait it out. You can wait for one more mission, and that is really huge when you're hoping a Civ gets shot because another statue visit is not necessarily going to do it for you this time because it's five, not four. We're going to statues instead. We are going to finish in specs, and I have to imagine this is going to be a shot. It's a fingerprintable statue, too. So much reason to look at this. There is the shot right in the shoulder. Opie Rice is going to maintain their advantage through Veranda and has a chance to end it on the very next game. This match has gone back and forth. Punch, counter punch, it's what you want to see from these players. But this might be the last punch coming from Opie, spying on Veranda for the win and a berth in their first Winter Cup Finals. In three, two, one, playing it. Of course, spy side on Veranda is really not the place where you want to be looking for a win. But a green test multiple time hats here off the bat to start things off opie writes not letting off the gas playing with that margin green and white and from the sniper side the pillar covering the window too because the ambassador's on the far left side and screw loose wanted a view of the entire venue i think we might have gotten away with that pretty clean look at that five and a half minutes to play with and we start with the early green test stop me if you've heard this one before the question is now what's opie going to do with all this extra time to play with here on veranda especially that gives you so much, so much freedom to just figure things out. And over here with the Ambassador and Toby on the far side of the venue, not being very threatened, but now might be the time for a microfilm cheese. I mean, you've got all the time in the world to play with. You can sit here for two minutes and not necessarily be falling behind. And yeah, it's another green flirt. God, 
Cast like this, I kind of wish voices had clipboards. I want to control V that comment every freaking game because it's just been green flirt after green flirt. The one exception was that crazy ballroom game from Screwloose that they won, by the way. So maybe the spy should be rethinking their flirt strategies, but they haven't started yet. Opie Wright's still halfway done with the flirt, and with that time, is content to just sit here, I think, and timer flirt. Yeah, and that's the right call, of course. Uh, without the time being a pressure here, uh, we finish flirt right off the bat. Two green flirts again. Opie Wright's <laughs> just hitting those action tests as necessary. Um... And with all this time to play with, so many options here still. Uh, with those time ads and the two green flirts, we have finished Seduce before the Veranda game has started. <laughs> is the simple way to put it. So you're really ahead of the curve so far. And more importantly, we haven't gotten any suspicion for it. We see a couple highlights with General and Rocker here, but we're not one of them. So we have one mission done essentially with no suspicion and with other members of the party gaining more suspicion. Gonna, gonna oh, safety off on General already. Save you off on General already, and, air and General is walking away from the General area that the Purloin came off. It's a green test, and oh my goodness, General's just shot Screwloose clearly all over something small perceived to be spy-like, and that's it! Just like that, with no warning it was coming at all. Opie writes, is in the Winter Cup Finals for the first time, takes the set down 9-5, to five, Dolly Parton style. Yeah, really good job by Obi Wright. Screwless brought it back, but Obi Wright just slammed the door after Screwless tied it up and finished things off strong with, I think, four straight wins ripping it off there. Yeah, it was four to one Opie, then it was four to four Screwless. And look at this at the end. Opie Wright wins nine to five. This was a match of swings back and forth. At no point was anyone just matching the other person. It was one person was hot or the other was. The problem was that means two win streaks for Opie, one for Screwloose, and that's what puts him in the finals. Uh, all right. Well, while we're waiting for the live match to get started, uh, congratulations, Opie. Thanks. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Epic post-game interview. I guess we'll save the real good stuff for the finals, uh, although I hope you make it there, buddy. Let's see. You're there, but can you take on the winner of this next venue uh, match, rather? Oh, my God. If, uh... Too much talking. <laughs> Too much talking. Too much talking. Live matches. They make me nervous. They make me excited. It's going to be Uran versus T-Flame, and uh, you're going to be nervous facing either of those, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, so far, in all of my Cups experience, getting to finals has not led to any conversions um so the i it's i can't tell if it's the universe or just me not being good enough on the day in each of these finals but it's always a nerve-wracking experience <laughs> yeah have you seen the simpsons meme no no it is the children who are wrong no no it's the universe it's definitely not me i that's the tack i like to take too 